Hello and welcome to Bluffton High School for tonight's sectional semifinal action between the Van Wert Cougars and the St. Mary's Rough Riders. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. And Evan, the tournament road starts tonight for both of these teams. We, are, we have a great matchup. Two teams, very familiar with one another, just played each other a little over a month ago. Should be a great matchup tonight. Yeah, absolutely. These two teams are very similar in terms of their results. 13-9 for St. Mary's, 13-8 for Van Wert. Both teams 6-3 in the WBL. St. Mary's won their matchup 43-35 earlier this year. But I'll tell you what, Nate, I can't believe it's tournament time already. How quickly did this season go? I know. It seems like we were just talking at the beginning of the season. And then here we are already. The road to Dayton begins tonight. Take a look at the starters for both of our teams. Starting first with the St. Mary's Rough Riders, they're going to start number one, Ella Jacobs. Number two, Regan Allmeyer. Number five, Morgan Hess. Number 14, Reese Rabel. And number 20, Cora Rabel. Look over at the Van Wert Cougars. They'll start tonight. Number one, Sailor Wise. Number 15, Kyra Welch. Number 20, Sophie Hogue. Number 23, Maria Bagley. And number 44, Aaron Schaufelberger. You gotta watch out for Morgan Hess for St. Mary's. 10.4 points, 8.7 rebounds this year. A fantastic force offensively and defensively. And over on the other side for Van Wert, Kyra Welch, 12.6 points a game. Sophie Hogg, Haug, excuse me, 14.4. So two players that can score there. And you can't forget the Ravens, 8.94. Reese and Cora turns in 9.3 again. Opening tip is going to be controlled by the Rough Riders. Allmeyer moving around the perimeter. St. Mary's right now showing a little bit of patience, working against this Cougar defense. Cougars are switching the screens on the perimeter. S has that one taken away. Nice job by Sophie Howe. Come underneath and get the first turnover of the game. And good heads up help defense from Haug. Haug coming from the back side, knocking that ball away. I like what Van Wert did there, switching all the screens and now a 3-2 look for St. Mary's defensively. Van Wert looking for that soft spot. Ends up kicking it back out to the top of the key. That one's going to be short. Rebound by the Rough Riders. Here they come. Cora Rabel moves it up into the front court. Nice drive into the lane off the glass. Tough shot for Reese Rabel able to get the rebound was the Rough Riders. Van Wert will be content with that. If they can force everything to the basket and let Schaufelberger block it away, that's great. There's Haug. She comes up with the steal, but can't finish on the other end. Going to go out of bounds. It stays with the Van Wert Cougars. Good transition defense from Ella Jacobs right there. Coming back, knocking Haug's shot away, but a good steal from Haug. Nice find coming through the lane. But Bagley not able to finish. St. Mary's comes up with the rebound. Score Rabel once again moves it up. Nice find down low, but Ella Jacobs can't finish. Another offensive rebound for St. Mary's. Three-point shot is blocked. Schaufelberger did a nice job closing out and getting her hands on that basketball. Yeah, we mentioned Schaufelberger inside. Great defender, but right there, nice closeout to knock that shot away. Welch's three-point try falls a little bit short, but Van Wert able to get the rebound. They're going to reset the offense. Schaufelberger almost has that one taken away. Welch thought about the three-pointer again, decides to pass it across. And Van Wert works around the perimeter, looks to the inside. Schaufelberger trying to post up. They find her. She's going to spin towards the basket. Can't get that one to go off the glass. Good rebound by Van Wert. Open look on its way, and good. As Kyra Welch gets the first two points of the game for Van Wert. Maria Bagley with the offensive rebound, and a nice job by her not just getting the offensive rebound, but quickly turning and finding a teammate. Van Wert moving the ball and finding that open shot on the second attempt. Cora Rabel has to get rid of it, as Reese Rabel now works with the left hand. She gets cut off. Good defense by the Cougars. She has to pass it back out. Tries the entry pass. It was tipped, but St. Mary's able to get to it as Number five, Morgan Hess did a great job recovering after that loose ball and getting the basket. Yeah, Hess is a good player inside. She averages 12 points a game, 10 points a game, excuse me. That one's kicked away, but right there, that's a tough shot. I think Van Wert will be content. If they can force shots like that on every possession, I think they'll be happy. That wasn't an easy look. It was just a really nice finish. You saw Van Wert having a little bit of trouble with that press from St. Mary's to get bailed out by the kickball. Now it's Wise. Let's the offense get set. Try to feed it to the inside. It gets taken away by Cora Rabel. She pushes it up ahead. Allmeyer gets undercut, 
but it looks like but prior to that, Kyra Welch had her foot out of bounds. So St. Mary's catches a break, and they're going to keep the basketball. Both teams doing a nice job running the floor right there. It was Welch getting back and taking that pass away. Lob pass on the inside to Hess. Hess waiting for the handoff, decides to keep it herself. Going to pull up from just beyond the free throw line. That one's off the back of the iron, chased down by Wise. Another good contest right there from Van Wert. Again, switching the screens, especially on that handoff, it's important to make sure you stay in Hess, and they did a nice job contesting and forcing the miss. Wise gets it over to Welch. Welch, three-point try one more time. That one's no good. Fight for the rebound, and we're going to have a tie-up. Maria Bagley in there for the Cougars, able to tie that one up, and the possession arrow will favor Van Wert. Nice job by Bagley. She's a workhorse. She works really hard on the offensive boards, defensive boards, and she's a fantastic perimeter defender. Not necessarily the highest scorer on this team, but does a lot of stuff away from the ball that you really like as a coach. A little bit of a head fake by Welch around the perimeter. Tried to get to the inside, but left that one just a little bit short. Cora Rabel, no one's coming out to pick her up. Thought about going inside, drops it back off. Here's Allmeyer, back out. Jacobs, three-point try. That one's going to be short. Ends up into the hands of Welch. She's trying to push the pace. Good decision that time by Welch not to try to force it. Pulls it back out, lets your teammates catch up. As wise as three-pointer is way off the mark and hits off the side of the backboard. You know, probably a little quicker than Van Wert wanted to shoot right there. Probably better for them, especially not being able to get a bunch of good shots to try to get back in their set and work against that zone defense. So both offenses struggling here in the beginning. Four minutes left to go in the opening quarter. We're tied at two. The defense is doing a nice job of forcing them out of rhythm. Jacobs almost lost the handles on that one, able to gather it back in. So Allmeyer's going to move it around. And St. Mary showing a little bit more patience here on this possession. Hess trying to back down Welch, but Welch just reaches around and takes it away. It's going to go out of bounds, though, and will stay with the Rough Riders. And that's what I think St. Mary's is going to need to do. They need to get Schaufelberger on a switch away from the basket and then go inside and try to back their way down. As long as Schaufelberger's not there to block the shot, Hess is going to be able to score. Here's Rabel. Cora Rabel works around the screen, pulls up, gets it to go. <coughs> Cora Rabel with her first two points of the night as St. Mary's goes on top four to two. Van Wert's trying to pass out of the press, and they're able to do it. Bagley hands it off to Wise. Welch, she's going to let the three-pointer go one more time. Way short on this one. As you can see a little bit of frustration that time out of Rachel Welch. She wants these three-point <laughs> three shots to get, be a little bit closer to the basket, but right now she's just off the mark. Yeah, and if she can start hitting some of those, it's going to put a lot of pressure on this defense. They're trying to run that zone. But as soon as you start knocking down shots and extending that zone out a little bit, you're going to create some pockets inside. So I'm sure Van Wert's hoping Welch can knock a few in or at least look dangerous. And that three-pointer goes as Reese Rabel comes up with a big basket for St. Mary's as they extend their lead to five. It's a nice catch and shoot three right there. Rabel averages 8.4 three-point attempts per game. Shoots 27%, but that's a nice knockdown. Reese Rabel gets this one, moves it around as the pressure from St. Mary's defense causes another turnover. Cora Rabel, she works against Shuffleberger. She gets it off the glass, no good. It's going to get punched out by Wise and will stay with St. Mary's. Substitution into the game as Jordan Blythe checks in for Van Wert. We also see Reagan Allmeyer come back into the game for St. Mary's. So 2.30 left to go here in the opening quarter. St. Mary's on top, 7-2. To Another three-pointer on its way. This one's going to be long, but ends up right into the hands of Ella Jacobs, who puts it back up to two. Van Wert sees that lead grow. They want to take a timeout and talk about it. 30-second timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Yeah, the offense is definitely yeah, the offense is definitely struggling, but the defense has done a really nice job. St. Mary's has knocked down some really tough shots. They have to work really hard at the offensive end. I think Van Wert just needs to attack this defense a little more. Maybe put some pressure on the inside, see if they can go inside out, make that zone or make those players in the zone work hard. See a foul's gonna be called here. This one's gonna go, I believe, on number four. As Ashley Nuss had checked into the game for St. Mary. So that is her first, team's first. This has been a pretty clean quarter for both teams. Van Wert will take it out from underneath their own basket. 
Here's Welch. Going to pull it out, let the offense get reset as she passes it over to Wise. They keep working that inside, trying to soften up that zone. Welch, she's going to drive into the lane. And she'll be fouled. This one's going to go on Reagan Allmeyer. It'll be her first, team second. And we'll see Welch get to the free throw line. It's a good attack right there. She got into the paint, and what I noticed is that the defender under the basket didn't really come out to challenge, so that might open some stuff up at the top of that key for some mid-range jumpers. If they can knock them in, it's going to be a good shot because you want that defender to come out and guard and help because that creates space under the basket for maybe a dive or a post-up. So Kyra Welch able to connect on both of her free throws to make this a 9-4 game. As we see Cora Rabel check back into the game for St. Mary's. A little bit of pressure here from Wise. Rabel able to get around her up into the front court. Full head of steam. Now St. Mary's going to work it around. They've had some success here late in this quarter. A little bit of patience here on, the, on offense, working things around, trying to go to the inside. Shuffleberger out of the game right now, so they have an advantage. They try to take it as Ella Jacobs can't connect. Welch pushes it up ahead. Long pass. Howe pulls up for two. That one can't go. Fight for the loose ball, and we're going to have a foul. As Maria Bagley was fighting for that rebound, and number 14, Reese Rabel, is going to get whistled for the foul. So after a pretty first clean six, six and a half minutes here in the first quarter, three quick fouls by St. Mary's. Now right there. Just trying to box out, but the offensive player had great position. How about that block underneath by Morgan Hess? And that's what I'm talking about right there. You have the space away from the basket a little bit. Pull up and shoot that instead of attacking the defense. Make her come out and guard you. Don't make it easy for her to guard. Cora Rabel's three-pointer was about halfway down before it rattled back out. Basketball ends up out of bounds, but it will stay with St. Mary's as Cora Rabel's going to take it on the inbounds. Here's Hess. Gets it back over to Rabel. Long pass over to Reese. Reese trying to work through the screen, and we're going to have a foul as Ella Jacobs is going to get called on the illegal screen. That screen just happened a little bit early before she could set her feet. St. Mary's trying that motion offense. Again, with, with Van Wert switching every screen, it's making it really tough to find an opening. So they're trying to go more quickly, but in doing so, they went before that screen was, was set. Candace Hirschfeld checks into the game for St. Mary's. As you're still seeing Van Wert have a little bit of trouble with this press, almost lost that one as Ella Jacobs was able to get her hand on it. Howe gets, kicks it back out, Wise able to track it down. And here's Kyra. Kyra takes it back up right around the logo. Picked up her dribble, so she had to get rid of it. As Van Wert just seems to be Almost confused as to what they need to do and the movement they need to get to get an open look here at the basket as St. Mary's defense has been really good. Welch is able to get a little bit of space, can't get a connect. Rebound comes down to Van Wert. And as you see Jordan Blythe put the put back in, it's no good. Hess trying to race down the court. No foul, but goes out of bounds and it will stay with St. Mary's. Great transition defense. Van Wert got three players back in defense and were able to stop away from the basket as well, which makes it really tough to finish. Able to knock the ball away. Hess hands it off to Jacobs. Or excuse me, hands it off to Rabel. 13 seconds left to go. We're going to have a foul. And this one is going to go against Hess. So with 13.3 seconds left to go, Van Wert gets the basketball back on the offensive foul and have a chance to get some points here at the end of the quarter. And the fouls are 5-0 St. Mary's as they've gotten really aggressive here, like you said, in the last few minutes. They've got to hurry. Last five seconds here, passes it up. How going to try to score. Has to get rid of it. Bagley puts it up. That one's going to be short. Loose ball, and that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. It has been all defense here as St. Mary's has the lead 9-4 at the end of one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, and Delphins. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 9-4 as we head into the second. St. Mary's on top. 
And when you take a look at the scoring, even though there hasn't been a lot of it, it is a little telling as St. Mary's has had four different players score their points. For Van Wert, just one. Kyra Welch, one basket from the floor. She got two from the free throw line. No other scoring from her teammates. She's going to need some help here in the second. Yeah, absolutely. And it's still tough trying to figure out this 3-2 look against or for St. Mary's. They're playing a great defense. And Van Wert just hasn't really figured out how to get good shots. But you mentioned the defensive battle. It's exactly what we're seeing. Van Wert switching every screen up top, making it tough for St. Mary's to find anything. So that ends up right into the hands of Blythe. She hands it off to Wise. Bagley able to gather it in and get it over to Welch. So now Van Wert going to slow it down, set things up. Bagley comes up top to get the pass, gets it back over to Welch. You can tell they're trying to work the basketball around in a way that will get them a little bit of an opening there in the middle as Welch goes all the way around the lane, but she's going to pick up the travel call first, and it's going to be another turnover for the Cougars. Right now, Van Wert shooting one of 13 from the field. So definitely a tough look. They've, they've missed a couple shots from outside, but I still think they need to work in that lane a little bit. You can see them try to get inside right there, make that defense collapse, maybe get a couple fouls as well as St. Mary's has shown some aggression inside. Hess fighting through a host of Cougars. Has that one taken away by Bagley. Bagley looking for somewhere to go with it. Gets it over to Welch. She brings it up. Passes it off to Wise. Wise, she's going to work with the right hand. Has to stop. Gets it back up to Welch. As the Cougar offense is trying to find something that will work so they can get going. Welch kicks it back out. Bagley thought about the shot. Decides to pass it back off. So right now Van Wert just move, moving the ball, trying to find any bit of space. But St. Mary's doing a great job recovery. Welch gets in the lane, pulls up. Couple of bounces, no good. The rebound comes down to Jacobs. I still like the shot. I still want to challenge that defense, make that bottom player think a little bit as to whether or not she wants to come out or stay home. Cora Rabel works around in the lane. Her turnaround, no good. Jacobs with a great save, finds Hess cutting as Hess goes into the basket. No good, but she's going to go to the free throw line as Kyra Welch will get called for her first foul. And that's the first foul against Van Wert so far tonight. Give it to Kyra Welch. So Morgan Hess steps to the free throw line. Lines up her first shot. And it is no good as it bounces off the front of the rim. 38% free throw shooter. As a team, St. Mary's only shoots 56% from the line. Certainly a place they want to look to improve in this tournament. Aaron Schuffelberger coming back in for the Cougars as Jordan Blythe takes a seat. Morgan Hess. Long on her second free throw, but a great job by Jacobs to come up with the offensive rebound. Reese Rabel lets the three-pointer go. That one's no good, but one more offensive rebound for Jacobs. Another shot. That one's going to be short. Schaufelberger comes up with it. Schaufelberger gets it over to Wise, quickly up to Welch. Van Wert has numbers. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Hogue tried to get around the defender. No good. Schaufelberger, her, pass was a, or her shot was a little long. Ends up back into the hands of the Rough Riders. Cora Rabel, long pass. Reese Rabel, she was deep, but she has that range. Step back three on its way, no good. Fight for the rebound one more time, and Jacobs finally gets the shot to go down as Ella Jacobs now has four on the night. Good fight from Jacobs underneath, and right there, a nice job getting the rebound, but patiently putting it back up. We've seen a lot of players rush shots, which has led to a lot of misses, but right there she did a great job gathering herself and putting it in nice and easily. You know, I think right there might be a little bit of the issue, though, with the Van Wert. As you saw, uh, Sophie Howe come down, and she got worked off the screen, was going to come baseline. But then instead of going up and maybe trying to pick up that foul, passed it back out around the perimeter for everything to kind of restart. And they just don't seem to be in that attack mode right now. Yeah, and I think that's a, true, a, a product of how many shots they've missed. A lot of times you start missing shots like that, and you start to get a little more hesitant. The defense is doing a nice job collapsing. So that shot is going to be off. Rebound comes down to Reese Rabel. A couple of substitutions for the Rough Riders. Sierra Gruber, Gruber comes in, as does Ashley Nuss. Allmeyer thought about that three for a second, decides to pass it off to Nuss. She's being guarded tightly, but you see Sophie Hogue as she's able to take it away. Welch, she's going to go all the way with the left hand off the glass and in as Kyra Welch is keeping Van Wert in this game as she now has all six points for the Cougars. There's that attack mentality you were hoping for. Nice job there, just getting to the rack and finishing. 
especially from the left side through a couple defenders. Allmeyer tries to slip past. The Schuffelberger does a nice job getting into the passing lane and taking that one away. Just over four minutes left to go here in the first half. Five-point game. Van Wert trying to get a little bit closer. Bagley back up as Howe drives into the lane. Rough Riders able to get a hand on that one to disrupt things, and they take it away for another turnover. Right there, she got to a good spot. I think she just needs to float it up over the defender. Even if she misses again, we keep talking about challenging that defender underneath. Right now, that defender is just able to plant her feet underneath the basket and play defense. No one's making her work at all. Allmeyer able to save the basketball, got it over to Hess. Is going to set the screen for Allmeyer, but Allmeyer's pass right at the feet. But somehow, this Rough Rider's able to gather it back in. Long pass, extra pass to Rabel. Rabel, she's going to drive. Almost lost it, but here's Nuss. Nuss gets the three-point try to go. Yeah, that was a big one right there. It's her first three make of the year. Maria Bagley, she puts the shot up. That one's going to be no good, but Schuffelberger with the rebound and the putback. And I think Schuffelberger is going to have to be a big part of the game plan for the Cougars going forward. She's a presence down low. They just got to get her going. Yeah, absolutely. She did a nice job there getting in good position for that rebound. And Bagley, maybe not the best shooter from that spot, but she noticed that Schaufelberger was under there ready to rebound. So you might as well fire it up because the worst case scenario is a second chance. Uh-oh. Long shot one more time. Rabel not able to connect. Bagley comes up the rebound. Welch. Full head of steam, passes it up to Haug. Haug has it taken away by Reese Rabel. And then Sophie Haug not giving up on it, able to kick that one out of bounds, so at least lets Van Wert get set up on defense. Now with Jacobs coming back into the game for the Rough Riders. As St. Mary's has used their bench a lot more than Van Wert has tonight. Ashley Nuss is going to bring it up for St. Mary's. This one almost taken away, but they're going to say an over and back as Reese Rabel, the official says, she got it prior to carrying it into the backcourt, and that's going to be why the violation occurred. Yeah, a lot of times what happens on plays like that, even if the defense tips it, if you don't wait until you're established in the backcourt to grab it, and you grab it in the front court and your momentum takes you into the back court, that's still over and back, right? A smart player would wait until they establish position in the back court before grabbing it. How that time, not able to connect, but we're gonna have another foul as Cora Rabel's gonna get whistled. It's gonna be her first, it'll be the team's sixth as the fouls for St. Mary's had slowed down here in this quarter. How for three, that one's no good. Maria Bagley does a great job getting that rebound as she tipped it back to herself. Schaufelberger's three-pointer, no good. Nuss comes up with the rebound for St. Mary's. Rabel tries to lob it down low. Ella Jacobs gets the put back, and now she's gonna have an and one opportunity as looks like Aaron is gonna get whistled for that foul. Jacobs has done a really nice job underneath, grabbing some offensive boards. She has two putbacks now. Six total points. So Ella Jacobs at the line, lines up her first free throw. Shot is up, and it is good. So Ella Jacobs, five points in the quarter. St. Mary's has a 17-8 lead with under two left to go in the half. Long pass up to Aaron. Schaffelberger finds Hogue, extra pass to Bagley. And it was a great job by Van Wert to break that press, but how about Ella Jacobs getting that clean block from behind? She's been big right now, or being big right now, underneath offensively and defensively. Cora Rabel moves it back up around midcourt. St. Mary's. Plenty content moving around the perimeter right now, not trying to force anything on the inside. Haug once again able to get her hands on that pass, but St. Mary's this time able to keep the possession. Hess, turnaround jumper is good. Great catch and shoot that time by Morgan Hess. Yeah, St. Mary's starting to knock down some shots, creating some separation before halftime, and now Hess with the steal. That turnover was caused by that defensive pressure, but we're going to have a timeout. 
as St. Mary's did not want to give up that possession that time. Yeah, and right now the Riders are, are playing tough on both ends, and I'm starting to see Van Wert kind of wear out a little bit, starting to lose a little bit of confidence. You saw, you mentioned actually earlier, they're not really in that attack mentality, and I think that presence inside from a few of those defenders for St. Mary's has been really big for them. Under a minute left to go here in the first half. We'll take a look at the brackets. As you take a look, the winner of tonight's game will go on and play Fostoria Saturday at noon here at Bluffton High School with the winner then uh, moving on to the district tournament over in Paulding. So a tough matchup for whatever team uh, moves on here tonight. This is the first of two sectional semifinals from Bluffton tonight. We'll have them both here for you on WOSN. The next game features two teams that are very similar on paper as well, similar records, exact same WBL record. So we have a great night of basketball here at the treasure chest. Mild stomping ground. 40 seconds left to go. St. Mary's looks like they might be content with trying to milk the last seconds off this clock to get the last shot of the half. And we're in a zone defense right now, kind of a 2-1-2 look. You can hear the bench yelling for Cora just to hold the ball, not get any extra passes. Didn't want Van Wert to time it up and jump one. 20 seconds left to go. Ho comes out, gives some defense. St. Mary's with 15 seconds left to go. Going to have to try to make their move here probably in the next four to five seconds. Hess gets it over to Rabel. Reese Rabel, she's hit a couple of big shots tonight for her team. Four seconds to go. What a great job running baseline, but not able to get the last shot to go down as Candace Hurstfield was just off, and that brings the first half to a close. After the first half of play, St. Mary's on top, 19 to eight. We'll step aside and be back with the second half here on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Second half action underway here in this sectional semifinal between the Van Wert Cougars and the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter. You know, and Evan, you know, not a ton of offense, at least early in that first half. St. Mary's really started to find something towards the end of that second quarter. But Van Wert still struggling to solve this puzzle that Van Wert's defense has thrown at them. Yeah, definitely. Van Wert just not shooting well. They're about three for 25 from the field. And as you said, St. Mary's really started to knock down some shots. They found some space. They were able to create some separation on the scoreboard. 11-point lead here and a really good chance here to just kind of be patient with the basketball and not take any bad shots. Ella Jacobs for three. That one's going to come up short as Van Wert comes up with the rebound. I'd like to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight. It's presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. As you see Van Wert, their first offensive possession, still struggling with this uh, St. Mary's defense as they're going to turn it over. Morgan Hess with a nice turnaround jumper. It's a good move right there. She averages 10.4 points per game. She has six right now, but a good job not lowering the shoulder, but still creating contact, which pushed the defender off the spot. She's able to finish. Now a steal at the other end. We're going to have ends a up getting it right back. But they really need to take care of the basketball, get the ball up the floor, get into some offensive sets. So this press that St. Mary's has been showing at Van Wert all night has caused them issues. St. Mary's has been able to force a couple of turnovers. Long passes. Hess had that one read the entire time. Van Wert fortunate that that wasn't another turnover. Yeah, I like the idea of passing the ball ahead over those first three defenders because actually there's only one defender deep. So if they can get it to one of two players and you attack that defender, you're able to drop it off for an easy layup. But those passes have to be a lot harder so the defense can't get there first. So here's Welch. Welch did most of the offense as, uh, for Van Wert there in the first half. As you see, Cora Rabel just reach right in and take that one away. And we're going to have a foul. This is going to go on Aaron Schaufelberger. It's going to be her first, or excuse me, her second team's first of the half. Cora Rabel brings it up for the Rough Riders. Here's Jacobs. 
Jacobs working against Schaufelberger, drops it off. And another three-pointer by Reese Rabel, her second of the game. As St. Mary's is starting to open this one up. It's a great catch and shoot three right there by Rabel. That's the second time we've seen her catch it and fire quickly. That'll be a foul on the ground by Reese Rabel. But Cora doing a really nice job catching, facing the basket, squaring up her shoulders and knocking those three pointers in. So Reese Rabel picks up her first foul. Or it's her second foul, excuse me, the team's first. And it's going to be another turnover for the Cougars. 24 to 8, St. Mary's on top. Only a minute and a half has passed here in the third. There's Ashley Nuss into the game for St. Mary's. Gets it over to Jacobs. Extra pass down. You see Rabel thought about that three pointer, decides to put it on the floor, and she loses it. Debbie Jones is coming for the Cougars. This is her first action of the game, and that pass is taken away one more time by St. Mary's. Jacob with a great find. That just shows great court vision. Morgan Hess not able to finish, though. We're going to have a tie-up, and the possession arrow is going to favor the Cougars. Really nice job by Jacobs right there. Caught the ball, made the pass really quickly. There's an open look. Unfortunately, St. Mary's not able to finish. But Jacobs does a lot of really good stuff, not necessarily scoring, although she does have six points tonight. But she does a really nice job. We've seen some offensive rebounds. Uh, we've seen a block defensively. She moves her feet well on the perimeter. And right there, you can see the vision and the ball movement that she provides for this St. Mary's team. Jordan Blythe checking in for the Cougars during that last stoppage. Here's Welch. She's going to try to split the defense, has it poked away. Well, that's what you want right there. You want her to split the defense and attack the basket. Unfortunately, she lost the handle right there. But if you want to get something going, you really need to do it quickly and get inside. Jacobs, long pass over to Rabel. Reese Rabel, a couple of big threes already in this game. As St. Mary's moves the ball around the perimeter, looking to the inside, seeing what Van Wert's going to give him. Lots of screens, lots of switches for the Van Wert defense and that St. Mary's offense, but right now the St. Mary's offense getting the better end of the deal. Has turnaround jumper. Nice job by Van Wert to contest that one as it comes up short. Welch going to pass it up to Haug. Haug runs baseline, has to get rid of it. Blythe has it taken away by Nuss. Ashley Nuss grabs it, going to hold on to it, and St. Mary's is going to settle. And Van Wert just not taking care of the basketball right now. A lot of turnovers, not able to register many shots. Spending a lot of time on the defensive end. See Rabel trying to find Hess moving towards the basket a little bit long on that pass. So to go back to the Cougars, and we're going to have a timeout. Van Wert will take the full timeout, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpook, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Van Wert takes the full time out. They've got to find some way to get this offense going as they have yet to score here in the third quarter. Welch has the basketball. As Van Wert right now still just cannot find any space to get the ball moving towards the basket. And they're trying to create. And St. Mary's has done a great job of getting into those lanes and poking the basketball away. They really are. And they've kind of shifted away from the 2 3 zone. And now they're kind of running a box and four, chasing Haug around. Jones' shot is going to be off, ends up in the hands of Hess. Can't fault the shot. You've got to take those open looks when you're down this much. But right now, Van Wert really struggling. So Van Wert that time trying to run a second player over, trying to see if they can't get some turnovers, extra possessions. This time, Morgan Hess going towards the basket is going to be fouled. And I believe this one will be on Welch. It will be. That will be Kyra's second of the game. And it is the second team foul here of the half for Van Wert. Morgan Hess goes to the free throw line, lines up her first shot. It is up, and it is good. 
Morgan Hess now with seven points on the night. See Cora Ray will come back in for St. Mary's. As Sarah, or Sailor Wise comes in for Van Wert. Morgan Hess able to connect on her second shot as Ashley Nuss comes into the game for the Rough Riders. Riders going to stay in a 2-2-1 full court look. You know, I think part of the issue with this is that they haven't always known exactly where they want to go with the basketball. As Haug's three-point try comes up short, and so they've been telegraphing those passes. If they could kind of figure out a way of positioning themselves where they know as soon as they touch it where they're going to go, they get a few more open looks. As that, and that loose ball ends up off the hands of Van Wert and will stay with St. Mary's. But until they, they'll, they'll, they can find a way to consistently break that press, St. Mary's is just going to keep throwing them at them, and they're going to continue to struggle. Yeah, absolutely. There, there has been a lot of timidity. That's backcourt violation. Referee missed it. That's all right. That was another one where they didn't establish possession in the backcourt, caught it, and jumped over. But that's all right. Rabel now working against Blythe. Going to be an inside pass to Hess, and they have made a conscious effort here in the second half to get that ball to the inside to Morgan Hess. Sailor Wise throws on the brakes, lets the defense run by, and now here's Welch. Good block by Hess. Welch almost just trying to will a basketball up and hoping for some contact as she was underneath the basket a little bit too far, but clean play by the Riders' defense. And they're going to get the basketball back here with 155 left to go in the third. Yeah, they're really tough underneath. We talked about that in the first half, but the defenders inside have done a really nice job. When Van Wert goes inside, they collapse. Van Wert hasn't done a nice job playing inside out and creating some shots on the outside. What they've been doing is forcing a lot inside, and St. Mary's able to knock a lot of shots away or at least alter them enough to cause misses. St. Mary's doing a great job this possession. Long passes, and they're making that Van Wert defense chase the ball for long distances. And you can just tell these girls are getting tired out here. Hess working against Wise. Good position, created her own space, and able to put it in for two. Yeah, I've seen that twice now where she does, again, a nice job not putting her shoulder down because as soon as you put that shoulder down, the referees will hit you with a charge. But she's still able to generate some contact, push her defender off the spot just a little bit, but that creates the space she needs to finish. I've been really impressed with her control underneath. Ella Jacobs picks up the foul. She fouled Welch as Welch had gotten around her and was making a run for the basket. So that will be her second, and she will check out of the game. 26 to 8, 114 left to go here in the quarter. Van Wert still looking for their first points here of the third. A little bit of stoppage of play here. Not sure where the confusion is as the officials are going to get together, going to talk to the scorer's table. Oh, it looks like the officials got the answer that they needed, and we'll get play going one more time. How gets it into Welch. Right back, extra pass, Welch for three. A little bit short, but nice job by Bagley. Going to try to create, and I love seeing that play right there out of Maria Bagley. A senior trying to make something happen. You could just see it on her face that time going in. She was determined. She wanted to get the basketball up. Couldn't get the shot to go down, but she will make a trip to the free throw line. Hey, sometimes someone's got to make something happen. It's not their leading scorer, but it's a leader away from the basketball. She does such a nice job rebounding, boxing out, playing good defense, and right there, just a nice job attacking, trying to put the team on her back and get something going offensively. So Bagley able to connect on both her free throws. And I think right here is a, I mean, this is the issue with Van Wert tonight. Maria Bagley with those two free throws is now tied for the second leading scorer on the Cougars offense tonight as they have just really struggled offensively to get anything going. First two points of the third quarter though, see if they can get a stop and get something going, try to get some momentum to go into the fourth quarter. They've only made three shots from the field so far tonight. The rest have come from free throws. Under a minute left to go here in the quarter. As Hess. Going to work against Schaufelberger, kicks it back out. Going to come up high to set the screen. See, Sophia Metker has come in for the Rough Riders. <laughs> Excuse me, nice find underneath, but that basketball no 
that will not go down and ends up out of bounds and go back to the Cougars. So with 31.1 seconds left to go, they and Wirt with an opportunity here to try to see if they can't get some points on the board. Everything good over there, my guy? Man. <laughs> the pizza, the pizza <laughs> it's the not concession stand not sitting well. Tasted good coming down or going down, I can tell you that. <laughs> Going to have a foul on the floor as this one is going to go against Cora Rabel. And it's her second, team's third. So now Van Wert has an opportunity here to set up in their half-court offense as Sailor Wise has the basketball. Wise moves it back around to the top of the key, tries to find Welch. Welch gets into the middle of that but just goes right into Hess who gets a clean block. And with 10 seconds left to go and a clear backcourt violation, Hess that time, just a little bit of a mental mistake. Forgot where she was on the floor. So with eight seconds left to go, Van Wert with the break. Going to have an opportunity to score here when it looked like St. Mary's may end up with the last points of the quarter. That was such a strange play. Both referees were a little bit confused. It took a second to blow the whistle. Welch kicks it back out. Haug, three-point try on its way and good. Maybe that will be what Van Wert needs to get that offense going as the lid finally came off the basket for Van Wert. They still have a little ways to go, but they're within striking distance. We head to the fourth with St. Mary's on top, 28-13. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpawk, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Bluffton High School. Nate Garlock alongside Evan Skilleter as St. Mary's will begin with the basketball and the lead. But Van Wert finally is able to get some points on the board. And after being held scoreless for the vast majority of that third quarter, the third quarter actually ended up being their highest scoring quarter so far. Yep, and that three was big. Like you said, hopefully some momentum. Hopefully it pulls St. Mary's out of that zone just a little bit and creates some space inside. So here's Cora Rabel with the basketball, working against Wise. Has it taken away, able to get it back in. Rabel trying to hold on to it, but Wise comes around the backside. She's going to get called for the foul. As, and that will be Wise's first foul, team's third of the half. Reese Rabel on the inbounds. Long pass to Cora. Cora now is going to drive into the lane, gets that one up, no good. As Schaufelberger comes up with a big rebound. Welch works against Rabel. Rabel almost picked her pocket. It's going to be important for Van Wert to score on almost every possession at this point. They either got to score or they got to find ways to get this clock stopped. See if they can't maybe get St. Mary's to get some fouls, send them to the free throw line. Welch, three point try on its uh -oh. way and good. As Kyra Welch had struggled from behind the line all game long, but hits a big one here to open the fourth. Back to a 12 point game. Welch up top, works against Rabel. Cuts her off, Rabel has to pick up her dribble. And we're gonna have a turnover out of bounds. As Sophie Hogue that time, she was a little dangerously close to committing that foul on that turnover, but put the pressure on as Reese Rabel couldn't gather it in. Welch gets tripped. We're gonna see Cora Rabel picks up her third foul. That's five against St. Mary's so far this half. There's only one left to give. I'm sure Van Wert would love if they can get into the bonus. Wise, short on that one. Schaufelberger tried to save it, but she's out of bounds, and it's going to go back to St. Mary's. Look, I don't mind that shot. It's early in this quarter. You need to get some stuff going. Obviously not the result you want. But that's a good look. Just throw something up there, try to get things going. Your team's already on fire. Just got to play some good defense, only down 12. Well, and right now they haven't been able to solve that zone, and the only way they're going to get them to come out of it is they start hitting a couple of exactly. three-point tries, so why not? Ella Jacobs up top, looking for the back door. Finds Reese Rabel, but she couldn't get it up. Morgan Hess wasn't ready for that pass. It's going to go off her legs and go back to the Cougars. 
Fourth quarter's playing out, or at least the start of it, how Van Wert would need to get back into this game, but they got to cash in on some of these offensive possessions. And they have to move quickly. I think they've been doing a nice job breaking this press. Well, she's just going to go right at it and try to see if she can't go through it. Nice job changing directions, does get it up. They have the numbers as Maria Bagley was trying to use the defender that time to prop herself up, but when the defender moved, she drug that foot. Going to get called for the travel. But I still like that attacking mentality Bagley has. We talked about it earlier where she grabbed the rebound and just went straight to the basket and drew a foul. Long inbounds to Jacobs. She's able to gather that one in. Cora Rabel now going to hold things up just a little bit. As you see Van Wert getting a little bit more aggressive here on defense as Kendra Deering had come in for Maria Bagley. Picks up that foul. 14 foul for the Cougars here in the half. And Reese able to get that one into Hess. Hess finds Jacobs. Jacobs into the lane. Pulls up for two. No good. Shuffleberger comes up with the rebound, and Welch has the basketball up into the front court. Welch gets it back, sets the screen, finds on the inside, off the foot, but it may end up being okay. Three-point try on its way, and off the glass for Kendra Deering. And the single digits right there. It's a nine-point lead for St. Mary's. They're struggling. And now the gym coming alive after being quiet for most of this game. As you can feel the momentum going to the Cougars as Kendra Deering has brought a different kind of energy to this team. She's going to get whistled for a foul again, but I do not mind these fouls that she's picking up. She's into attack mode. She's being aggressive. She's trying to get turnovers, and she's trying to get some life back in her team. Absolutely, and you have fouls to give. That's only team foul number five for Van Wert, so you might as well be aggressive trying to get that ball back. Now with five, you might want to play it a little bit more safely, but I really like the aggression. Bad pass by Hess as Cora Rabel not able to gather that one in. And we are going to have a timeout. It'll be a full timeout for St. Mary's, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Santa Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 4.55 left to go in the fourth. Van Wert on a run as they are within single digits for the first time since early in the first quarter. Van Wert with the basketball trying to break this press of St. Mary's. Welch cuts right through the defense. Nice bounce pass up ahead to Hope. Alex three-pointer, no good. Morgan Hess with the rebound. That would have been a big shot if it could have gone down, but a little bit short. Legs getting a little bit tired here into the fourth as Van Wert has had to work very hard on defense. And they throw it away. Welch gets the basketball, and she's going to be tripped up by Morgan Hess as Hess picks up her second 16 foul of the night. So from here on out, any fouls will send Van Wert to the free throw line, which is what they're looking for. Nice, easy inbounds for Van Wert. As I think the St. Mary's defense kind of lost uh, Blythe that time. Blythe gets it on the inside, turns around with the right hand off the glass. Jordan Blythe with her first two points of the night, and this is a seven-point game. It's a big one right there. I also noticed that there were some players open on the perimeter when they went inside, so maybe something Van Wert will want to look for later on. That time a little bit over pursuing by the Van Wert defense. It's going to lead to a wide open look for Reagan Allmeyer. She gets two points. It's her first basket of the night. Going to have another turnover. Allmeyer gathers that one in, pulls it back out. Thirty to twenty-one. Three thirty left to go here in the game. Ella Jacobs. Tries to work through the double team. And we're going to have another timeout. It'll be just a 30-second timeout for St. Mary's. Do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. 
Donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. 3.30 left to go. St. Mary's reeling a little bit, only two points in the quarter as Van Wert's making a run. Yeah, absolutely, but St. Mary's has kind of slowed things down a little bit. They just had a nice long possession, although they got trapped. Coach called a timeout to try to make sure that they don't get caught on the sideline like that again. But if they can keep running some time off the clock, longer possessions, they're going to be in good shape. Van Wert's going to have to play tough defense, but with five fouls, they don't want to get too over-aggressive. I think this is a big defensive spot for Van Wert. If they can get a stop here and get some points, that's going to be huge. But if you let St. Mary score too often here, or too many more here in, at, towards the end of this game, they're just going to, you're going to run out of time. Yeah, absolutely. Jacobs almost throws that one away, but Cora Rabel does a great job going up and getting that basketball. Hal almost thought about trying to jump that one, decides to put the brakes on, so St. Mary's has to move the basketball back around. Almost. Lost that one as well as Van Wert is getting so close to taking this basketball away. Hess on the inside throws this one up. Fight for the loose ball. Going to be out of bounds. And it's going to go back to Van Wert. And I think they're probably going to say that as Ella Jacobs came over, she carried um, Haug out of bounds. Yeah, so I think Jacobs was already standing out of bounds when she reached out and touched the ball. But it's a good play. Again, we see her crash the board so hard. She's making things happen for her team. Man, Wirt's got to be have a little bit of sense of urgency here. Can't let the clock get away from them too much. Daring hands it off to Welch. Welch works around the screen. She's going to try to drive. She gets fouled before the shot. It's going to be on the floor. As that one is going to go against Cora Rabel, as that is going to be her fourth of the night, and it will be the bonus for St. Mary's from here on out. So Kyra Welch is going to go to the line to shoot the one and one. Welch made her first two free throws back in the first quarter, and she makes this one. A couple big ones here for Kyra Welch. Where it's going to have to press no matter what whether or not the shot goes in or not. Well, the second shot is up and good. So back to a seven-point game. Van Wert trying to get a turnover. Cora Rabel, not a whole lot of resistance as she got it up into the front court. Fortunate that lob wasn't picked off as she was trying to get all Meyer and ends up back into Cora. Ella Jacobs, she's going to go baseline. Has to get rid of it. Great job by Blythe to get her hands on that basketball. Long pass up to Deering. She's all alone. Deering gets it off the glass, and she's going to get fouled as Kendra Deering is coming up big for Van Wert. It is now a five-point game as Kendra Deering goes to the free throw line to shoot the and one. Great pass right there. Good job by Daring as well, realizing that the defense wasn't really paying attention to her. So as there was a fight for the ball in the backcourt, she just took off toward the basket and a big pass down the court. Daring's free throw is up. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to St. Mary's, but it's going to be taken away. No, we are going to have a jump ball with the possession arrow. I believe it's going to favor Van Wert as it does. Uh, Missed the last two points on the scoreboard for Van Wert. So the crowd making sure that, that mistake is fixed as the officials are going to come over to make sure that it gets corrected. I think they're having some trouble with the scoreboard. The guys at the scorer's table both say, we know that it's 25, but he's working to get the 25 actually on the board. That's longtime basketball man Scott Gleason down there on the scoreboard by the way Scott and Gleason a couple of Bluffton basketball legends as well Bob Kindred sitting to his left two guys that have coached at Bluffton for a really long time they know what they're doing these folks don't realize it uh, but those guys are, are sharp so they call over the site manager to work on that scoreboard and this really benefits Van Wert as they're going to get the basketball in the out of bounds they get a free time out here to talk about it and try to draw something up they can come away with two more points. They can make this a one possession game. And I, I don't know that any of us would have thought that that was possible coming into this fourth quarter. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. They've done a really nice job here. We saw them right before the fourth quarter, right at the end of the third quarter, Haug hit that big shot for three. We thought maybe that was going to pull the lid off the basket, and it certainly did as they hit a couple big shots to start the fourth quarter. And 
They've played some good defense at the other end as well. Coming into this fourth quarter, they had 13 points. They now have 12 here in the fourth quarter alone. As they have the scoreboard back and running, it does reflect the correct score at 30 to 25. And Van Wert now going to get this basketball underneath their own basket. 2.13 left to go. And Van Wert trying to make an improbable comeback. They're still having issues with the scoreboard. They're going to have to manually input the score rather than just hitting the plus two button. Good job by the officials to recognize the issue, get over to the scorer's table, everybody working to get that fixed quickly. And ultimately, what fans don't realize, it doesn't matter what's on the scoreboard necessarily, score-wise. As long as that scorebook score is right. Okay. Yep, absolutely. And they do have, a, and I think a lot of people forget that there's an, a fourth official, and he's at the scorer's table, he's in stripes, he works with this crew, and he's keeping the official scorebook. Absolutely. Now they're going to make sure that the arrow gets changed as it needed to get flipped from Van Wert. Now we'll be back to St. Mary's, but Van Wert will get the basketball first. See what Van Wert can do on this inbounds. You know, we said it benefited them. They had all the momentum, but it also kind of stopped the flow of the game and see if Van Wert can get things going again. Yeah, but right now they don't have to rush a shot. We've seen a couple of possessions where we really want them where they really want to get a shot quickly, but right now they can work for a good shot with two minutes on the clock. That well, that's short. going to be a little bit short on that one. Hess comes up with the rebound, and we're going to have a foul as that one's going to go against 20. As Sophie Haug is going to get whistled for her first foul. It'll be the sixth, so it's just going to be out of bounds for St. Mary's. You know, and I think even Van Wert might have got a little caught up listening to the crowd. You could hear him yelling, go, 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 but only down two possessions. You didn't need to be in a hurry that time, and I think that might be why Welch forced that shot as Deering is going to pick up another foul. This is going to be the and one. It'll be her third. Almost looked like she fouled intentionally, so not if the bench just wants to try to see if they can't get the clock stopped here. Send St. Mary's to the free throw line, see if they can get some misses. And look, St. Mary's only shoots 56% from the line, so fouling for Van Wert's probably a good strategy. Kendra Deering's going to pick up another one as that is her fourth. And now Aaron Schaufelberger going to come back into the game as Jordan Blythe will take a seat. So Ella Jacobs at the free throw line. This will be her second trip tonight. She went back in the second corner. She converted the in one free throw. Jacobs long on the first one. But Van Wert that time kind of got caught boxing each other out. And we're going to have another foul. And Kendra Deering just fouled out of this game. They actually called that against Sailor Wise. I'm not sure, but nobody fouled out. They just switched it on the scoreboard to number three, which would be Bella Bain. Maria Bagley back into the game. That free throw was good as Cora Rabel able to connect. Just the third point here in the fourth quarter for St. Mary's but it pushes us back out to a six-point lead. Cora can make this a three-possession game with this free throw, and she does. Good free throws right there. Her team needed those. So now the clock is a problem for Van Wert. They're going to have to go quickly as they need at least three possessions. Bagley gets rid of it. Van Wert a little over uh, crowded on the one side, gets rid of it. Bagley lines up a three-point shot on its way, and it rattles in. Three-point try is good by Maria Bagley, who had just checked back into the game. Her first made basket of the game as her other two points came from the free throw line, and this is just a four-point game. Yeah, that's a great shot right there from Bagley. Doesn't shoot much from outside, but that's a big one right there to make it like you said, just a four-point game. So right now, Van Wert in a good spot. The next foul is going to give St. Mary's two free throws. But again, St. Mary's not the best free throw shooting team. So Van Wert just quick or be tough on the inbounds and foul quickly. So as we mentioned earlier, the winner of tonight's game is going to go and take on the 
fourth seed Fostoria on a Saturday the 18th at noon here at Bluffton High School with the winner of that game moving on to the districts over in Paulding. As this game has really tightened up and it has been exciting fourth quarter as Van Wert has finally found a way to get that offense going and they have all the momentum going in their way right now. So I imagine Van Wert in that timeout talked about who they want to try to force the ball to, who they're going to try to foul, as they seem content to send the Rough Riders to the free throw line to see if they can win this game from there. Foul comes quickly from Wise. It'll be her second. Two free throws for Raven. Now she is the best free throw shooter on this team, averaging 73% from the line. So it's the last person Van Wert wanted to foul, but they didn't really have a choice, right? You gotta get that foul quickly. You see Maria Bagley, Aaron Schaufelberger quickly come to the scorer's table. They'll check in after this first free throw. Maybe 24 left to go. Cora Rabel, free throw. Rattles in. She is now three for three here in the quarter, doing everything she can to try to push this lead out for her team. Rabel's second free throw is up, and it is good. 34 28, minute 20 left to go, turnover. St. Mary's is fine with holding it. Great heads up play by Rabel who could have easily taken that shot. And now they're gonna have to foul. They come over and they're gonna have a foul on Morgan Hess as she's gonna go to the free throw line to shoot two. Maria Bagley's whistle for that foul. It is her first. Hess is a 42% free throw shooter. Morgan connects on the first. What a nice job from the line so far tonight. Last six points for St. Mary's have all come to the free throw line. Make it seven. And that's what a team needs to do in the fourth quarter. They've got to be able to make the free throws to close it out. Seven straight points. And we're going to have another timeout on the floor. This is going to be a full timeout, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Savings Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpawk, and Delphix. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Savings Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Minute eight left to go as Van Wert finds themselves down eight. Welch works against the press, gets it back to, or gets it back as she's going to try to work against Allmeyer. Tries to split the defense one more time, and that one tipped away, so kept her dribble. And Van Wert does end up getting it into the front court. They've got to go quickly, though. They're down eight. They cannot afford to hold the basketball for too long. Welch spins into some traffic. Has that one taken away by Hess. Morgan moves it up ahead. As Reese Rabel almost fouled, but saves it. As St. Mary's right now is just holding on to the basketball. And it looks like Van Wert doesn't look like they're going to try to foul as the foul does finally come as Sophie Howe ran over. She's gonna get pick up her second. So Reese Rabel makes a trip to the free throw line to shoot two with 25.4 seconds left to go and her team up eight. It's a good fight from Van Wert. You have to be proud. If you're a Cougars fan, this team looked like was just kind of lost for about three quarters, but all of a sudden this fourth quarter they came alive, they hit some really big shots, and it will probably end up being a pretty tough loss. But again, as a Cougars fan, you have to be pumped. And for St. Mary's, I'll tell you what, in the first round of a tournament game, when you have to fight, you, it, it's one thing, we saw two scores. We saw a 57 to one and an 87 to one game last night in the girls tournament. And those kind of games aren't going to help you get better. And so for St. Mary's having to withstand some of this pressure from Van Wert, this is going to be really helpful for them heading into the second round. Another timeout on the floor. Are you out of town or can't get WOSN? 
WOSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world, anytime. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. You know, you mentioned this probably is going to end up going in St. Mary's favor with 18 seconds left to go, but Van Wert did not go away quietly. Coming into this quarter, they were down 28 to 13, and they came storming back 15 points in the quarter. As St. Mary's only has one basket from the field here in the fourth, but they got it done from the free throw line as they only missed one free throw as they had seven, went seven from eight from the line to try to seal this, seal this one. You mentioned Van Wert should be proud of it. St. Mary should be proud as well, doing a really nice job here in the fourth quarter, working hard, still playing some good defense. Van Wert hit some really big shots. Schaufelberger's going to let the three-pointer go. She connects. So Van Wert making sure that this, this score gets a little bit closer. Only a two-possession game. But it doesn't look like they are going to. They do end up fouling with 3.6 seconds left to go. Still having some problems with the scoreboard to our left here. The scoreboard was shut off on the left during that possession, but the one on the right was still on. So you see the seniors for Van Wert getting checked out of the game. Very emotional for those ladies as the Van Wert crowd stands, acknowledges them for everything that they have done for this program over the years. It's always the tough part about tournament time. You know, for one team, there's not a tomorrow. That sometimes, you know, it, it, coming in, there's a lot of hope. That's the tournament is a brand new season. It feels like you kind of get to hit the reset button, and it's hard to be one and done. And these ladies fought hard tonight, though, as they made a valiant comeback, but they're going to fall short as they fall to St. Mary's 37 to 31. A tough one again for Van Wert, but we had a great game for you, and make sure you stay tuned after this one for Elida against Kenton. All WBL here at Bluffton High School, but really looking forward to that as well. Yep, absolutely. So that is going to about wrap it up for us here at Bluffton High School. Game one of the sectional semifinals goes to St. Mary's Rough Riders as they knock off the Van Wert Cougars by a score of 37 to 31. For Evan Skillard, I've been Nate Garlock. We appreciate everything our crew has done for us as well, working behind the scenes, working the cameras, and working back in the studios, doing everything you guys do. Thank you so much. One final time, St. Mary's knocks off Van Wert 37-31. You've been watching Girls High School Basketball on WOSN. Have a great night, everybody.